Hey y'all, welcome back to the kitchen. I'm still in here messing around and cooking and I thought I would whip us up some pumpkin bread. You know, gingerbread, pumpkin bread, those spicy things just go with cool weather in this time of the year. Now I've got some nuts that I'm toasting. The original recipe does not call for nuts nor raisins, but I'm going to add some today. So when y'all get your recipe card, it's just going to be for the plain pumpkin bread. But I'm toasting about a cup of pecans to put in it. And I've done this before and I like it. <clears throat> and I'm going to add probably three-fourths of a cup of just regular raisins. But I'm going to bring y'all over to the mixer. Let you watch me mix it up. I'll get this in the oven and we'll have some good pumpkin bread. Got this recipe from a friend of mine, Pam Bounds. She used to own a little tea shop in Cleveland. And uh, she would, we would bake this in little mini muffin pans instead of in loaves. And everybody that came in, when they were seated and given the menu, they got three or four of the little muffins for little appetizers or little whatever, save them for dessert if they wanted to. That's where I got this recipe, and that's been about 30 years ago. So you can imagine how many times I've made this. I've used the fire out of it. Anyway, I will uh, get you over to the mixer and let you watch me mix it up. And I'll get it in the oven and I'll smell a house that smells like fall. Come on over to the mixer and let's see what we can do. Okay, into my mixing bowl I'm going to add three eggs and I've already got one in there. Three large eggs. I'm going to whip those a little bit. Then I'm going to add two and a half cups of sugar. I'm going to add one cup of vegetable oil. Let that incorporate well. Okay, I'm going to add in one cup of pump pureed pumpkin. This is not pumpkin pie filling, it's just pureed pumpkin. To that I'm going to add a half a teaspoon of salt, a half a teaspoon of baking powders, and I'm adding a teaspoon of cinnamon cloves, uh, soda, nutmeg, and allspice. That's what makes it smell yummy. Spices all tend to stick it to the side up at the top. You know why I like to cook stuff with oil? Because you don't have to remember to put your butter out to get soft and, or else try to soften it in the microwave. Okay, into this I'm going to add two cups of flour. I love the smell of the spices. Now, this would be done, but I'm going to add about three-fourths of a cup of uh, raisins, and I'm just going to estimate. I'm 
my toasted pecans. Boy, they smell good. Okay, now we have it just about ready to uh, put in our loaf pan. And all I did to the loaf pan, I pammed it really well with, well, it wasn't Pam, but that's the generic name, isn't it? It's cooking spray. I need a grandkid here to want to lick the beater. Okay, we'll go over and get it in the pan. Okay, let's get it all into the pan. I think I'm going to have enough for a small one too. Let me get a small pan out. Get it sprayed. Yeah, I guess adding the extra stuff that I added gave me that much extra and I love it. So I'll have one to take and give away. I like that. I'm going to get these into a 350 degree oven. The loaves are out of the oven, but they're cooling a little bit. The little one cooked about an hour and the big one cooked about 70 to 75 minutes. I'll get it on a plate and be back in a minute. Here it is on the pretty plate. And you could add uh, cranberries, like the craisins, instead of just regular raisins to this if you wanted to. Sometimes when you're baking, the humidity that's in the air, you have to add a little extra baking time. So what I always do, I use a cake tester when I think that it's about ready. I use my little cake tester, and if it comes out clean, then I'm satisfied that it's well done. But if there's any crumbs on it or moisture, I always cook it another three to five minutes, just three to five minutes at a time to keep from overcooking it. But this one's done, and it's still too warm to cut. But I wanted y'all to see it while it was uh, still whole and pretty on the plate. Now I'm going to tell you all about this little plate that it's on. This is a paper plate. I got it at Hobby Lobby at the end of the season last year or the year before. But each holiday, they end up putting their stuff on 90% off. So if you have a Hobby Lobby coast to you, you can pick up some things for that season the next year for, you know, 10 cents on the dollar. I, did, I didn't pay much of anything for these plates, and I sure have enjoyed having them. So now y'all have another one of my favorite recipes that I've been making for about 30, 30 years or so. It freezes well, and you could get two to three small loaves with it without adding the extra pecans and stuff. I got a regular loaf and a small loaf because I added raisins and pecans, and that increased the amount of the dough. I hope y'all add this to your little book if you're keeping one. And y'all need to try it. And if you try it, come back and let me know. Let me know how you like it. You can make it in muffins, mini muffins, mini loaves, or big loaves, cupcakes. It, uh, it's versatile in how you cook it, but boy, that flavor's good. Y'all come right back here tomorrow, and we'll have another good recipe. And in the meantime, spend some time with your family and make some sweet memories. Turn off your cell phone and all that junk and have some one-on-one -on -one time with your family a little bit every day. Don't let a day go by that you don't spend a little bit of time with that thing sitting aside and it not taking priority. Spend some time with your loved ones. Time's pretty short. Y'all have a good day, and I'll see you again tomorrow. The good Lord bless you.